Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to MPARC's Ubin Day 2020 webinar. My name is Kaming, and I'm from the Pulau Ubin team at the National Parks Board. Pesta Ubin is our annual celebration of the different facets of Pulau Ubin, such as the natural and cultural heritage, during which there will be many activities happening in Ubin. Through these activities, we hope that everyone will be able to learn about this beautiful emerald island of ours. As for Ubin Day, it is the last hurrah and the culmination of our long celebration. This year, as we can't gather due to COVID-19, the, the organizing committee has decided to bring the celebration to you through our first ever virtual pasta Ubin and Ubin Day. Today is Ubin Day, so we have a very interesting lineup of talks ready for you. Here is an overview to, of today's talks. If you haven't signed up for the next talk, you may still join us at the meeting link shared on the chat. You may also watch them live on YouTube channel at NPARKS SG at your convenience. From all the talks so far, I hope everyone gets a glimpse of the rustic charm and the cultural and natural heritage of Ubin. For natural heritage, we have yet to venture into wildlife. Pulau Ubin is one of the key biodiversity areas in Singapore and is sanctuary to many species. For instance, do you know that Ubin has over 250 species of birds? And despite being just a small island, Ubin is a stronghold for straw-headed bubu, a species which has been decimated in many parts of the world. Our speaker, Mr. Lim Kim Chua is the current chairman of the, Natural, the Nature Society Singapore Bird Group. As the chairman, he spearheads the group's effort to popularize bird watching to the masses and to raise the public's awareness about the importance of conserving our natural heritage. He is also actively involved in conducting bird surveys with the NSS, NPARKS, and also the Malaysian Nature Society. Lastly, Kim Chai is also co-author to several guidebooks on birds. Dr. Yong Ding Li, our next second speaker, completed his doctorate in biodiversity conservation at the Australian National University. He currently coordinates Bird Life International's work on migratory birds, bird, bird conservation in Asia, and is associate edi editor for Foxtail. Journal of Asian Ornithology. He has worked extensively in the region and has authored over 50 peer-reviewed papers. Through the NSS, Dingli and Kim Chua are currently working closely with NPARKS to strengthen various bird conservation initiatives in Singapore. For those on Zoom, if you have any questions during the talk, please send them to co-host Chiu Kaming as a private message using the chat. We will try to address a few of them later on. Without further ado, let me welcome Kim Tra and Ding Li to share with all of us about the birds we have in Pulau Ubin. Over to you, Kim Tra and Ding Li. Hello, yep, hold on. Eh? Okay. Uh, are you able to see, hear me and uh, see my screen? Can, can hear you, but can't see your screen. Oh, okay. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Would you like to put on slideshow? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, it's good. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks coming for the introduction. Uh, just a uh, very quick uh, uh, inter I mean, introduction, introduction of myself. Also, Kim Chua from the Nature Society. So for those who don't know what uh, Nature Society or, you know, uh, what, uh, what is Nature Society, it's an NGO uh, and a mission. Uh, our mission is to promote nature appreciation and conservation uh, in Singapore, also in the surrounding uh, region. 
Okay, and the Bird Group is a special interest group of the Nature Society of Singapore. Now, we also aim, the group aims to promote a better understanding and protection of wild birds in Singapore by raising public awareness through uh, bird watching and citizen science program, like uh, bird sensors, and uh, also we do, uh, you know, uh, bird race as well. So for those who are interested uh, to find out more about the Nature Society, uh, the URL is there, uh, in this, uh, www.nss.org.sg, and you can also reach us in the Facebook, uh, you know, uh, shown here. The, the uh, you know, some of the activi upcoming activities that the book group will be holding uh, in the coming months, uh, one will be the uh, uh, fall or the autumn, so-called the autumn bird census, that's on the 17th and 18th of October. And you also may want to consider taking part in an exciting, you know, uh, annual bird race. Uh, this is the biggest bird race in this region. Uh, this year, this will be the 36th bird race, and that will be held on the 5th to 6th uh, December. All right, so with that, uh, let me just uh, talk a little bit about, yeah, I mean, give you uh, an idea what we're going to talk about. So for me, I'll be kind of uh, talking about the, what the type of birds that can be found on Ubin, and then where can you find it? And then I'll leave uh, Ding Li to talk about the importance of Pulau Ubin for bird conservation, okay? Now, uh, I think as coming as alluded to just now, uh, there is about 252 species of birds that is known uh, on Pulau Ubin right now. So we kind of, uh, the Nature Society and other NGOs and the university, we collaborated with MPARCs on a two year uh, comprehensive uh, bird survey. Uh, two year, I mean, in 2018 and 2019. And during that uh, survey, we actually added about 10 species uh, of birds. So bringing the total from 242 to 252 species. That's about 61% of the total known species of birds, uh, you know, in our Singapore checklist. Uh, that's about uh, over 400 species of birds known on our checklist. Okay, now, so if you look at it, the species, uh, you know, they are comparable, the number of species comparable to very popular sites like uh, Sungai Buloh Wetland and uh, Kranji Marsh. As you can see, Wubin is about 252, Bulo has about 263 and uh, Kranji roughly over 200 species of birds. So you may ask, oh, so, you know, why bother to take the ferry ride, go to Wubin, you know, uh, quite, quite a long way off to, uh, you know, see birds, uh, you know, since they have a same, about the same uh, number of birds. But as you know, introduced by uh, coming just now, you know, uh, Pulau Ubin is rustic, it's a beautiful island, uh, give you an idea what Singapore was like in the 70s and 80s. So besides, you know, the birds, you can go there and enjoy the rustic charm on Pulau Ubin. But I think uh, on top of that, you know, there are some uh, very special birds on Ubin, interesting uh, species on Ubin that uh, may be easier to be found on Ubin than other parts of uh, Singapore. So in our next segment of my uh, uh, talk, I'll focus more on some of the interesting uh, you know, resident bird uh, uh, on uh, Palau Ubin. So I think this is probably the most famous uh, bird on Palau Ubin, the Oriental Pied Hornbill. Okay, uh, you know, but you'll be surprised that you no, know, actually, uh, although it is very widespread now. Uh, but this was actually first recorded on Ubin only in the 1990s. Prior to that, there were no, uh, com no, no records of this uh, very animatic uh, species. Okay? And we reckon that uh, this uh, species of bird is a, it's quite an adaptable hornbill that can be found in the coastal and kind of like second, uh, secondary forest, uh, sec secondary growth. And it may have uh, probably come in from you know, na uh, neighboring Johor which, uh, you know, uh, Johor prob uh, probably has a, a number of species of birds that have flown onto Ubin. Later on, uh, I'll share some of them, which uh, we, we think that uh, th th some of these species of birds uh, were actually uh, coming in from uh, Johor. So, uh, but uh, as, although, you know, you can see Ubin on the Singapore mainland itself, but uh, Ubin actually is a stronghold for, stronghold for this species. And during our survey, we have, you know, uh, kind of uh, counted uh, as many as uh, up to 60 species, uh, 60 uh, uh, birds, uh, 60 hornbills from uh, Palau Ubin. So it is a, a stronghold for this species. Then, uh, as uh, mentioned by Kamin, uh, you know, if uh, the Palau Ubin is an excellent place 
to look for the globally endangered, globally critically endangered straw-headed bubu. So what, what do you mean by critically endangered? Uh, so this, uh, we reckon that there is less than 2,000 mature individual of this species left in the world, okay? Not in Singapore, but in the world. So Singapore is actually the last stronghold. It's one of the last stronghold to find this species. So if you go to Pulau Bin, you will probably not, uh, not uh, you know, uh, miss this species. If you don't see it, but I think you will be able to hear, uh, you know, the, the beautiful song, the melodious song of this species. So why is it critically endangered? Well, unfortunately, in neighboring countries, especially in Indonesia, you know, where keeping pet birds is a part of their culture. So uh, this beautiful songsters has been uh, basically poached and trapped out from um, many, many parts of uh, Indonesia. So I think we reckon that it's like probably extinct in Java and very few left in Sumatra and even in Borneo. Okay, so I will play a snippet of the song uh, for you to, uh, to appreciate uh, you know, the, the, the beauty of this, uh, the beautiful song of this species. Okay, there's a snippet of that bubbly, you know, cheerful uh, song of this uh, very beautiful bird. And I'll leave uh, Dingli to talk more about it. Yeah, so this picture shown here is taken at the Hinhit Park uh, by uh, Yu Xiaotong, a friend of mine. All right, and the picture on the right is by Dana Gartner, another good friend of mine uh, who illustrated the book on the Malaysian, uh, Birds of Malaysia and Singapore. And then Pulau Bin is also a stronghold for another few more songsters. And some of this, uh, again, you know, uh, uh, because it's poach and is trapped in our neighboring countries. So the popular, I mean, the, the, some, some of these species are again uh, threatened. So if, if we do not, uh, if we're not careful, we do not conserve this, uh, try to protect and conserve these birds, uh, they will also join, you know, the dodo and uh, many other birds that have gone uh, extinct. So the white rump shama is actually a, a, a bird that is quite, is common on Pulau Bin. Pulau Bin is again a stronghold for this species. So this beautiful bird, I'm, I'm sure many, if you go to the you know, uh, pet shop in Singapore, you'll see many of this uh, 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 white rump shama, unfortunately in cages. From um, Pulau Bin, they are free to roam where they want and you will hear their beautiful you know, song. I'll play a snippet of that. Okay, so and then on the right is the orient oriental pied, uh, magpie robin. So again, this bird used to be pretty common. I remember as a kid, I, I grew up in a village and I used to see them in a the farm. They're very common and a beautiful song, you know, just, you know, it just transmits uh, through the whole uh, village every morning. But uh, it, it, it was all, it almost disappeared in Singapore, as Singapore urbanized in the late 80s and 90s. Fortunately, it made a comeback and actually uh, Pulau Ubin is a good place uh, to, to see this species. And uh, let me play this and uh, you know, uh, and you can appreciate the beautiful song of this species. Again, this is only a, you know, one of the repertoires, all the species, the shama, the pie, magpie robin, and then the uh, straw-headed bubu are, you know, they are able to make many more calls than what you just heard. So now I move to some other very, uh, you know, kind of like famous birds of uh, Pulau Ubin. I think these are, you know, what the uh, bird photographers uh, love to photograph. The two, uh, two pitas here, mangrove pita and the blue wing pita. So both birds breed in Singapore. Is so, uh, is so, I mean, uh, there are four species of pita in Singapore. So these are the two uh, resident uh, pita. In fact, uh, the blue wing pita was only uh, recently uh, discovered to be uh, nesting in Singapore back in uh, July, 2016. 
And it was on Pulau Ubin that we first discovered the uh, nesting of a blue, uh, blue wing pita. So uh, the mangrove pita is all the while, we know that it's a resident uh, bird in Singapore. So as uh, you know, the name implies, it lives in the mangrove. Uh, so if you look at the two birds, superficially, they look uh, very similar, all right, the mangrove pita and the blue wing pita. But if you look at the beak, all right, of this uh, blue wing uh, mangrove pita, uh, a picture uh, shown here at the nest, and this is actually, you see the piece of uh, flesh here, meat. This is actually from a uh, shellfish. And then if you look, compare the, the size of that big versus the blue wing pita, all right? So the mangrove pita has a bigger, more robust beak uh, due to its diet. It, it feeds on shellfish, uh, crab, you know, crustacean, stuff like that. So you need a powerful beak to break the shell. And that's the reason why you know it has a more robust beak than the blue wing pita. And then other subtle uh, features like it has a the the, the chin is uh, you know is white versus this. You can see there's a little bit of black here, and it, the, the black stripe here is uh, more kind of messy versus a more uh, a nicer uh, like maybe this picture here, a very straight black line here. And the blue wing pita has a, a bigger uh, blue wing patch. Okay. So these uh, pictures on the right by Alfred Chia shows uh, the blue wing pita nesting in Singapore. And this big, big clutch of five eggs and these are the chicks. Uh, this was taken in July uh, 2016. So the uh, ubiquitous, I think, uh, red jungle found now. I mean, but you'd be surprised that actually it was only first recorded in Singapore and Pulau Bin back in only the 1980s. But I think, uh, I think most of you must be aware that it has really spread uh, far and wide, and I think Botanic Garden is too many of them there right now, but yeah, he has really uh, spread a lot. But I think the interesting thing is that probably the, the only pure species very likely can only be found on uh, Pulau Umbin. I mean, the rest of, uh, you know, most of the other birds on the Singapore Island probably has been uh, kind of mixed or hybridized with some of the local domestic fowls. Right? So this is the red jungle fowl. And Maybe some other, just to share some other interesting uh, birds uh, that you can find on, uh, that, that can be found on Ubin. So we have two hornbills on our checklist. This is the other one, a black hornbill. This uh, shows a female or black beak. The male has a uh, white beak. And uh, there's only one individual right now on, uh, uh, on Singapore. And if you find, uh, to find, you have to go to Palau Ubin. So if, if you're lucky, you may find it uh, mixing, you know, with a flock of the oriental pipe hornbill. Okay? And then on the right, a beautiful mangrove blue flycatcher. So we found this one uh, nesting on uh, Pulau Ubin in the Czech Java forest uh, a couple of years back. So on and off, you do hear it, but uh, to see one, yeah, you need a, you need a lot of luck. But, uh, you know, the probably the best place to find the mangrove blue flycatcher will probably required you to get some permit to visit Palau Tekong. So if you happen to be an NS man doing a recruit there, you know, this is a one bird that you should uh, look out for. Okay, I mean, that's probably the best place in Singapore to look for the mangrove blue right now. But you never know. Uh, on and off, we still get it at Chick Java uh, in, in, in the Palau Ubin. And then some of these other very beautiful, colorful uh, birds here on the left, the rare, you know, very rare scarlet breasted flower packer. So far, we have only one record in Singapore discovered by, you know, three ladies uh, back in January 2015 uh, in Czech Java. So, so far, we have been trying uh, hard, but, uh, you know, uh, despite our effort, we, we have not rediscovered this species yet. But uh, I'm sure we just have to keep on trying. And then on the right, uh, the very beautiful uh, black and red broad bill. So I can see, if you can see the size of that big, now you know why you call it a broad bill. I mean, that broad, bluish kind of big. So this was first discovered uh, in Ubin in uh, August 2004. So I still remember, you know, I was rushing from work on uh, Jurong side, uh, dash all the way down to Pulau Ubin to see it back in August 2004. And then uh, fortunate enough to see it again uh, during one of uh, our census together with MPARTS in July 2019 in the uh, western part of uh, Singapore. I mean, sorry, western part of Palau Ubin. Okay, we, and uh, since then, uh, we have one record on uh, Sungai Bolo as well. 
And then these are some other interesting species where you can find on um, uh, in other parts of Singapore, but Ubin is also a good place to uh, find the oriental data. You know, was uh, kind of uh, uh, discovered at the Pekan Quarry back in 2015. Um, so this is, uh, and then the little grip, you know, in, uh, in the Singapore, uh, we have little grip probably only on uh, in the Lorong Halus wetland right now. So, but uh, on Pulau Bin, we can also, we can see it also in the Balai Quarry. And then the uh, mangrove whistler. Uh, so this, as the name implies, this bird uh, can be typically be found in the mangroves, but it, it doesn't, it is, it's also adapted to say in the uh, orchard or the rubber plantation. So this rather drab looking, you know, uh, species, you know, uh, as the name imply here, Whistler, it's a beautiful metallic sound. So I'll play a snippet of it here for you to, uh, you know, to appreciate what I mean by a metallic call. <laughs> Okay, so that is the mangrove whistler. And then there are other pigeons as well. Uh, these are, in fact, uh, Blau Ubin is actually good for pigeons out of the 12 species known on, in uh, Singapore. Uh, 11 are found on Blau Ubin, including the rare, you know, uh, cinnamon headed green pigeon, the even rarer mountain imperial pigeon. Uh, that picture is taken in uh, Blau Ubin. Uh, and then the green imperial pigeon is a little bit more common now, uh, used to be very scarce. Uh, now, you know, on Pulau, beside Pulau Ubin, you probably have a good chance of seeing it in the eastern part of Singapore, in Pasir Ris, and in Loyang area as well. And then uh, owls. Okay, so uh, many interesting owls on Pulau Ubin. Out of the uh, 10 species of owl known in Singapore, we have eight on Pulau Ubin, including the bat eagle owl, that fierce looking, you know, bat eagle owl. Uh, and then the very rare uh, brown wood owl. Uh, we are fortunate enough to see this cute baby. Yeah, it's just fledged from the nest, uh, not uh, very long. Uh, uh, and uh, this was discovered in uh, August, I mean, in, in 2011. So despite us searching very hard in the last, uh, in, the, uh, in the two year census or survey that we did together with MPAC, we have not been able to uh, rediscover this species. So the brown wood owl. And then the uh, spotted wood owl, more common, but it's also very common uh, on Pulau Ubin. And then, so you may ask, oh, wow, I mean, there's a lot of interesting species uh, on Pulau Ubin. Where can I go uh, on Pulau Ubin? It's quite a big place, like 1,000 hectares. So where can I go? So the next few, uh, the next slides, I'll show you uh, where you can, you know, go uh, to bird watch or to uh, photograph uh, birds on Pulau Ubin. Okay, so I, I would recommend basically uh, three main areas. Okay, starting uh, on the left, the western route uh, from, you can start from uh, Bubut Hut uh, and then depending on how fit you are, you can kind of walk on the road all the way back to the, you know, jetty. Or uh, you can just uh, hang around the, uh, you know, this area, these are all mangrove here, the Bubut Hut down to Sungai Puaka, uh, the, the Ketam Quarry here, this, this whole area, uh, mangrove as well, some uh, grassland and wooded area. So it's a pretty good place. So what you can do is you can take, you can ask the, you can take a van from the jetty and ask the driver to drop you at Puput Hut and walk back. Or if you are too tired, you can always call the van back and uh, pick you up. So, I mean, this, this uh, western part of uh, Ubin uh, is where you're likely to see things like the mangrove pita. I mean, the shama is there. I mean, uh, bubus are all there, and uh, even the black hornbill uh, is known uh, uh, is there as well. And uh, on the way back, if you stop by a quarry, the Pekan quarry, this is uh, where you can find things like the uh, the, the, the oriental data. And I've seen uh, black hornbill in uh, this area as well, in the Pekan quarry and the butterfly hill area as well. All right. So this is uh, one good place, the western uh, route, I call it from Bubut, uh, Bubut Hut to Pekan Quarry. So, but if you are, you know, uh, if you have kids with you or you know, some uh, more, you know, uh, old, uh, older folks uh, who can't walk very far, I would recommend just uh, hang on at the southern uh, uh, part of uh, Pulau Ubin here from the jetty. You can walk around the sensory trail 
okay, uh, focusing on the pawns uh, here, so it's very pretty good for uh, birding, or to go to uh, to check Java, uh, you know, area. Uh, this is where, as I mentioned, mangrove blue flycatcher uh, and uh, several other interesting uh, species. Okay, now, in fact, uh, just to add a little bit more, uh, uh, check Java is actually, I, I would reckon, probably the best uh, area where you can find coastal species in Singapore now. Okay, uh, this is where you see many interesting species like gray plover, rufous neck sting, the godbits, uh, you know, rake shank, knots, and, and so on. So you just need to take the van there, and uh, and you can you can, you can uh, you know look out on the, from the boardwalk and look into the mangrove mudflat. Bring a scope along, as most of the birds will be pretty uh, far out. Uh, you can see a picture here. These are you know people. Uh, I mean, counters here. My colleagues here, uh, Kim Kian and uh, other members of the Nature Society and parks, uh, they have permit to go onto the mudflat. So for those who are without permit, stay on the boardwalk. But a scope will be good enough for you to be able to enjoy, you know, the many species that can be found uh, feeding in the mudflats. So make sure you check the tide. Go for to go during the low tide. But even if it's high tide, doesn't matter. The mangrove around Chek Jawa is so good for many other species of uh, birds. Okay. So now uh, with that, I'm going to hand you over to Dingley, who will talk more about the you know conservation uh, val uh, value of uh, ubin, especially with regard to the straw-headed bobo. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick slide change. Yep. This one, right? Presentation. Okay. Did you see that? Oh, no, it's just a desktop share. Okay, see, we can use this. Where's that? The other one. All right. Um, did you, did you see? Okay. Yep. I think we should be okay. Um, Joseph, is this visible from your side? Yeah. Okay. Can. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, thank you very much to Kim Chua for giving us a, a very comprehensive overview of the uh, diverse bird life of Gula Ubin, uh, sharing with us some of these stories about. Um, the discovery of birds in Ubin, uh, as well as some of the birds, uh, the key birding sites on the island. I think that was a very uh, comprehensive presentation. Um, moving forward, I'm just going to add on to Kim Chua's presentation by talking a little bit about the value of Pula Ubin as a, a hub for bird conservation in Singapore. So you've seen that Pula Ubin obviously has a huge amount of diversity um, from uh, insects to vertebrates. And the, the accumulated surveys over the years uh, by all our colleagues, um, naturalists, professional researchers show that Pulau Ubin is really important for bird diversity. Uh, we've, we've done surveys over the years and that's, that has added up to more than 200 over species found on the island. Uh, but not so obvious to us is where Pulau Ubin stands as a conservation area for birds. And at least from the standpoint of a lot of our colleagues, including our friends in um, the Nature Society Singapore, as well as the National Park Spot, we all know that Pulau Ubin is a very important landscape for bird conservation at the national level. Uh, but maybe even less known to us is where Pulau Ubin stands at the global level. 
and uh, through lots of work um, by various people, uh, there is clear uh, understanding of where Ubin stands as a conservation spot for birds regionally and globally. Um, it's been recognized recently as a key biodiversity area, which is really big deal for bird conservation and more broadly biodiversity conservation because KBAs or what we call key biodiversity areas have brought international recognition, including by key authorities such as the IUCN, as well as the Convention on Biological Diversity. So we see that Ubin is important, as uh, you've seen from Kim Chua's presentation, for birds not just within Singapore. Uh, it's also important at the regional level and at the international level. Um, you might be asking, so what really brings Ubin to the international spotlight? Uh, part of that lies with a very particular species of bird, and that is none other than the straw-headed bobo. So you have seen the Shroyla Bobo story earlier on. It's, uh, it's uh, well, not the most colourful bird we have in Singapore, but it is a remarkable bird. For those of you who had the opportunity to hear it in the wild, it sings a wonderful song that can travel for hundreds and hundreds of metres, a very, very loud and resonant song. And for the case of Pulau Bin, the straw headed Bobo has obviously made this one of its stronghold in the country. It is probably one of the best places in Singapore, if not in Southeast Asia, for us to see the straw headed bulbul. Uh, the straw headed bulbul, as we all know, is a really threatened species. Uh, if you look at it on the IUCN list, it is listed currently as critically endangered, which means that it is on par with some of the most threatened animals in the world. For instance, the Javan rhinoceros. The uh, straw headed bulbul obviously has a very low population, and based on what we know from all of Southeast Asia, um, there may be not more than 2,000 individuals left in the wild now. But uh, very encouragingly, the evidence that we have collected from Pulau Win from over the years, thanks to the data that has been collected by Nature Society volunteers, as well as uh, Pulau Ubin's Nan Park staff, shows that over the years, the straw headed bulbul has gone through a steady increase of one to two percent per annum. And this is of course good news because when you look at it from the bigger perspective across the region, uh, Pulau Ubin is therefore exceptional for being one of those few places we know in Southeast Asia where the bulbul is in, uh, on the increase where else, elsewhere they are suffering major declines. So this is all really good news. Um, when we look at it from the broader perspective. And obviously this cannot be achieved um, without the very um, sustained and intensive conservation efforts from our colleagues in the National Parks Board, uh, as well as in close collaboration with uh, citizen scientists from the Nature Society and from broadly across the country. So I would see it as a, a success story for conservation, but of course the straw headed bulbul is just a banner for many of our other bird species, there are a lot of other birds that are being um, protected and are benefiting from the attention that we are giving to the straw-headed bulbul. Um, and of course, looking more broadly at the landscape of Pulau Bin, uh, we know that the habitat there has been very well protected. There's lots of suitable habitat left for the uh, bulbuls on the island. Um, a lot of this is due to the intensive efforts of the National Park Sport over the years. So this is all very good for us. Um, for conservation, some of us may be asking, uh, moving forward, what are the things that we can do? Uh, how can we um, ensure that these efforts are sustained over the years? And what else can we do to secure straw-headed bulbuls as well as other birds on Pulau Bin? Uh, a few things going forward. One would be to ensure that we have consistent mechanisms in place to monitor the straw-headed bulbuls as well as other bird species. Uh, there are also a, need, a strong need for us to have efforts to to uh, have patrols on the ground to look out for people encroaching, to look out for people poaching. Uh, and then of course, more broadly, we should have a plan in place like a strategy to see how we can conserve Pulau uh, Ubin's uh, straw headed bulbuls as well as those we have on the mainland. So all in all, I think um, we've seen that Pulau Ubin is a fantastic site for birds in Singapore. We now also know that it's a very important uh, uh, landscape for bird conservation at the regional and global level. A lot of this has been achieved uh, by our friends in NPARCS, our friends in Nature Society, and moving forward, 
there are a few key actions that we can continue to pursue to ensure that the birds, as well as the broader biodiversity of Lao Wien is protected for future generations. So I think this brings us to the end of today's presentation. Um, and I do believe that we have a bit of time for questions and answers. So for those of you out there who are curious uh, or want a little bit more details about uh, Pulau Bin's bird life and his biodiversity, do stay on to uh, throw in a few questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ding Li and Kim Cha. Okay. So we have come to our Q&A session. Thank you to those who have submitted questions. We have our first question. What are the main natural predators to the birds in Ubin? What are the main threats to the bird population there? All right, so I think it's a uh, really interesting question. I think it forces us to, th to think broadly about the ecosystem of Pulau Ubin. And obviously from, from, uh, from a natural point of view, there are many predators of uh, wild birds in Ubin. The first being the birds themselves. There are lots of predatory birds on Pulau Ubin. Kim Chuan would agree, right? There are <laughs> such a, a great diversity of owls and hawks. So they are obviously among the apex predators of Ubin. But that's not all. Of course, we know that Ubin has a wonderful uh, assemblage of mammals. And some of these mammals are, are obviously predators that could take birds if they could. Um, things like the, the, uh, the common palm civet is on Ubin. Um, for ground birds, they would be at risk from things like the, uh, the, uh, the leopard cat. So there are predators of, 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 um, of uh, wild birds in Pulau Ubin. But uh, coming back from the conservation perspective, what are the main threats or you could say the main uh, man-made threats to birds? Uh, we see that uh, over time, one of the most important threats that um, we have seen would be things like uh, poaching. You know, poaching has happened. Uh, fortunately, has been kept very low because of uh, very stringent enforcement efforts and patrolling efforts on the ground. And I think it's important for us to uh, uh, to to remain vigilant to the threats of poaching, because um, more and more people are now aware that Ubin has such a a great diversity of wild birds and that may you know result in in issues uh so i was saying that poaching would be a, a very uh important threat for open um and then of course over time in looking to the future i think there's a uh, it's important to have uh have plans in place to see how we can better secure the uh, the natural environment of pulau Ubin, you know with a view of having some part of it at least as a nature reserve yeah I hope, I hope that answers the question here. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it does. Okay. So, <laughs> <It better. laughs> so, the, so the second question would be, which kind of environment is good for birding? Mangrove or forest? <laughs> okay. Kim Chua, do you want to have a go at this one? Well, okay. Yeah. yeah um, okay, so I, I think... Um, it depends actually, uh, it depends on individual, uh, what, what kind of birds you want to see. I mean, both mangrove and the forest, they contain different species. Typically, you know, forest has more species of birds than uh, mangrove, but they are different, they are unique. You know, like for example, if you want to see a mangrove pit, uh, you have to go to the mangrove or the mangrove blue uh, flycatcher, you know, uh, so you have to go to the mangrove. But if you want to see a shama, you know, you want to see, uh, uh, I mean, just one example, uh, magpie robin, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, pro, uh, or Abbott's babbler, you know. So, you have a better chance of it in the forest. But of course, on Pulau Ubin, the two habitats actually kind of, uh, you know, intermix or merge together. So, sometimes they, you, you do uh, find mangrove pit at the edge of the mangrove or a little bit into the forest. And, and also things like, you know, straw headed bubu, which you think is uh, more of a forested species, you may find them in the mangrove. Okay, so on Pulau Ubin, uh, whether, uh, I mean, uh, so it depends on you, uh, uh, what, what kind of birds you really want to see. Yeah, and, and to add on to Kim Chua's point, um, I think the beautiful thing about Pulau Bin is that um, it, it has a diversity of birds, a great diversity of birds, but that's possible because it has a diversity of habitats. Mm -hmm. You've got a mosaic of mangroves, secondary forests, old rubber plantations. And so this, this complex landscape consisting of different kinds of vegetation is actually there. It adds up to the overall diversity of Ubin. So what, like what Kim Chua mentioned, um, 
well, it's hard to say whether this habitat or that habitat is it's, it's better. Um, some of these habitats would have certain birds that are pe peculiar to them. So there are birds that you could see in one of these habitats and not necessarily the, the others. So, but looking at it from the big picture point of view, um, the diversity of Ubin is where we can um, really enjoy that uh, entire, uh, you know, different species of birds on the, on the island, yeah. And in terms of species wise, I would say that uh, the secondary forest habitat, the secondary forest environment for Ubin is probably one of the uh, most uh, species rich environment. You could see a good variety of, uh, of woodpeckers, the hornbills, um, small pasturing birds and all that, yeah. I see, okay. Uh, how, is, how important is Ubin as a stopover for migratory birds? Ah, okay. I think I think I think that's a question for me, right? I think it's a question for me because I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not expert, but I'm obsessed with migratory birds. So, um, so a lot of us um, who have visited Pulau Ubin, we've seen migratory birds, and uh, we know that Singapore, as a as a country, we, uh, Singapore sits right near the heart of this huge migratory bird corridor called the East Asian Australasian Flyway, meaning that. You know, more than a hundred different species of migratory birds Ooh, passes see, through yeah, Singapore. Yeah, hundred over species. Uh, for Ubin, Ubin is important. Um, and as we have mentioned before, Ubin has this great diversity of uh, different habitat types. Uh, previously, we had focused obviously on things like mangrove, secondary forest. But I shouldn't forget the fact that the eastern part of Ubin has some great areas of coastal wetlands, some of the best the finest areas of coastal mudflats, seagrass beds, are on the eastern end of Ubin, at Chek Jawa. And our surveys, uh, you know, in collaboration with the national parks, have found that these these areas of wetlands are very important for shorebirds. In fact, one of the most important lands, uh, coastscapes now for for migratory shorebirds. So, um, if you think of it broadly from the Singapore point of view, Pulau Ubin is indeed very important for our migratory shorebirds. Um, and these shorebirds have been using these wetlands for a long time. I remember reading a report uh, from 1876, if I'm not wrong, 1876, whereby a bird watcher went to the eastern part of Ubin and saw flocks of waders. So moving forward, all, more than 150 years later, we still see that these shorebirds are visiting the shores of Ubin. So that shows us how important Ubin is for shorebirds. Uh, but of course, on top of that, we also shouldn't forget about the migratory land birds like raptors, flycatchers, and all that. And we know that they pass by Ubin on their migration uh, through um, the main island of Singapore towards Indonesia. So in short, Ubin is very important for migratory birds and perhaps one of the most important sites left in the country mm -hmm. for our shorebirds, species like um, gray plover, uh, various sand plovers, um, and even curlew has, has shown up on the coastal wetlands of Ubin. Yeah. Well, very good to hear about that. So we have come to our final question. Maybe you, uh, Ding Li and Kim Tra can give a very quick reply to what could mm -hmm. ordinary Singaporeans do to conserve the straw-headed bubble? Um, that's a really good question. Um, the striped bubu is a bird that it's not difficult to see on Ubin. And as uh, citizen scientists, as uh, bird watchers, as we visit the island, I think the, the very least we could do is to take notes of the straw headed bubu, um, keep an eye on where they are, and if you have um, information, submit them to the National Parks Board so that they can collect that data to get a, a long-term understanding of what are the trends of the straw headed bubu on, on, on uh, Pulau Ubin. Uh, and that wherever possible, you know, if you are visiting the island and you, if you see, you know, what seems to be suspicious activities, people potentially poaching birds, uh, do report them to the National Parks Board um, so that um, actions can be taken. So uh, quite a few things you could do. I mean, keep up, uh, keep a lookout for the birds on the island. Uh, if you see any unusual behavior or aspects of its ecology like nesting, share them with the National Parks Board, share them with the Nature Society. If you see suspicious activities, potentially of people trying to poach them, report them immediately. Uh, we know that Pulau Bin is a very important uh, landscape for straw headed bubbles. Um, the counts from, from the last couple of years show us that more than 100, I think more than 100 birds can be found there, which makes up more than, potentially more than 
than five percent. Five percent of the world, the world, not Singapore, of the world population. So Pulau Ubin is very important, and we need to ensure that um, whatever we can do is in place to ensure that birds are, are being protected. Yeah. Um, and of course, the last but not the least, uh, go out and look at nature. Um, I think by being out there looking at the striped bubbles, you are being brought out into the field to appreciate nature. And I think that's that's a good thing in general, mm -hmm. right? To to be able to be out there to appreciate nature. Uh, and share them with your, your friends, yeah. I hope that uh, answered, answered the question. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dingni and Kim Chua, for answering all our questions. And thank you for giving such an interesting session about birds. There are so many beautiful birds found in Ubin. Now that you know where the good bird-watching spots are, it's time to grab your binos and camera and head down to Ubin. However, if for some reason you are not able to go onto the field, but still are interested to view these places, do check out our virtual tour to Chek Jawa Wetland, one of the good bird watching spots highlighted by Kim Chua. There is also another virtual tour to Kata Mountain Bike Park, where our species recovery project for birds is on. These videos can be found in our Ubin Day 2020 playlist on our YouTube channel and Parks SG. Up next, we will have our last talk of Ubin Day 2020 webinar. N Parks started its first comprehensive Ubin Biodiversity Survey, also known as CARPS, uh, with in January 2018 with researchers and citizen scientists. There are quite a number of interesting findings that came about from this survey. If you are curious to find out more about the findings, do join us soon. If you haven't signed up for the talk, you may still join us at the link shared on the chat. Or you may watch us live on our YouTube channel, NParksSG, or at a later date. This brings us to the end of this session. Thank you, Kim Chai and Ding Li once again for sharing with us. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. We hope you have enjoyed the session. For our YouTube audience, we'll say goodbye to you first. Do share your feedback by accessing the URL in the description below. For Zoom audience, please stay on for a short while for us to take a group photo together. So for YouTube audience, we are signing off now. Bye-bye. See you.